Welcome back to our Southwest USA challenge map. This is the final challenge map that we are knocking out here on Jurassic difficulty. It's time to go ahead and unveil our latest expansion. We are adding in Stegosaurus here on this fourth stop on the monorail that we have added in. If we hop up to the big view on the map, We've been, we started out over here, well technically we started down here, but we immediately relocated for a more favorable position up in this corner, and we have been adding things all around. This exhibit is matched to be just about perfect for the zone that a single viewing gallery uh, will be able to reach. No dinos will be able to be hidden within this area, so let's go ahead, tailor things to their liking. We're going to probably need yet another operations facility. This has been, wait, is that the right thing? Yeah, that is the right thing. Okay, so it has been quite the battle to be able to keep our dinos well cared for over here. Where do we wanna put this? Maybe I slide it off in this corner. It's still relatively nearby. Wow, the Stegosaurus just immediately go to war with each other to be able to see who's alpha. And it looks like, uh, it looks like he got beat up, but he won? I don't understand. The Stegosaurus seem to be quite happy with their new little exhibit. I tried lowering all the ground to be able to kind of have that effect of your being able to look down on the dinosaurs from the viewing platform. And the goal here is to be able to set up the suite of three medium amenities and have them maxed out. So we need enough appeal to bring guests over to this portion of the park. We're going to try and get some cohabitation going with the Stegosaurus. And right over here, it's going to be an awkwardly shaped exhibit within this such a narrow confines but we might be able to squeeze in a small carnivore to be able to increase the appeal in this zone we've targeted this beauty oh dear Cintosaurus, guys, I'm sorry, the Americans never put TS at the very beginning of words, but he's going to be the cohabitating buddy of the Stegosaurus. He also uses ground fiber as his food source, so that'll be overlapping, and these guys enjoy living with other uh, species types, so their species types are compatible. The one thing is that the new Hadrosaur is going to be needy, guaranteed. All the eggs are needy. They will have to have more space and more food than normal to be content. And the Stegosaurus are right at the edge on everything and actually even a little cramped in terms of open space. So I think we're actually going to expand and try and just eat up this final little bit of space. I was holding this in reserve to be able to use for more staff infrastructure, but if the dinos need it, the dinos will get it. And it's not, I mean, it's not like it's a lot. It's not like I'm doing them a big favor by giving them this extra chunk. But it will mean they get a little bit of extra space. It will also mean we're going to want to go up to a viewing platform here. Flip it over. There we go. Terrain constraints. Oh, no. Oh, it's valid. I saw blue. But I don't want it over there. I want it over here. Okay. We're going to have to smooth out some of this terrain, I think, to be able to get it in. Oh, there it was. I saw a blue pixel. Give it back to me. Okay, well, if we don't connect it to the fence line, then it gets a broader general view of the interior of the exhibit anyway. So there we go. It's going to squeeze in right around this uh, power station and then cut in next to the bathrooms. And there we go. We can just wipe out that monorail platform. And, you know, the monorail is totally fine without any supports. I hope the pathfinding of the ranger teams is going to be good. You know what? We'll just move the gate. I'm worried about their pathfinding, so... We'll slide it out over here. I get train constraints just for the gate? Okay. Yeah, put it in the corner. That'll be easier because the rangers are coming from this direction anyway. Now we can knock down this portion of the walls, let them roam. <laughs> that would actually have been kind of funny to leave the gate just freestanding. It's just a free gate. And we can go ahead and airlift in the new occupant. But we're going to want to make sure that we uh, potentially add in more more food source. I mean, all they wanted was extra open space. Oh no, a Carnotosaurus. The first batch of my carnivores is growing old. They're old and no longer interesting. At least they're not fighting to the death when they become old. The young ones could, should be smelling weakness. But I've already prepared the uh, the backups. Ah, uh, Cabot Finch just corrected my pronunciation. It's Centosaurus and the T is silent. Uh, well, thank you. 
It looks like they're actually adapting to the habitat pretty well in spite of being needy, which is really nice to see. And they just need a higher population to really be able to reach that perfect range. The social needs for these herbivores is usually a huge impact in terms of their comfort. Of course, as you expand the herd, they are also going to need more space and more food sources. So it's all a connected web. We have just gotten the research that would allow them to flip uh, we would be able to genetically modify in the humble trait and a trick that I used on one of the other challenge maps was I bred some awesome humble dinosaurs that were meant to be able to take alpha so they would have some combat trait on top of being humble and so they were primed to be ready to challenge for a leader take it and then with the humble trait it only matters what the alpha of the group has whether it is needy or humble and then it imply it applies to the entire group so we might go for do i want fit or do i want strong well it looks like my scientist team is not currently capable of doing strong and it would also cost me two million dollars on the other hand if i <laughs> this web is so deep guys the web is so deep okay so one of our prime exhibits is the baryonyx the baryonyx right here he is a piscivore and he will very happily cohabitate with another piscivore the suchomimus to be able to get the suchomimus i have to release five dinosaurs with the strong trait so if we go ahead and invest in being able to get the strong trait we would be able to pick up the suchomimus and that would add a huge amount of appeal without having to add a new exhibit as well which we would need to do for pretty much any of these other carnivores Though I have to say this guy looks really cool. I don't think I've ever built them before. Okay, so what is holding us back from being able to get strong? That is a question that must be answered. We are a little bit off in terms of genetics. Everything else is pretty easy for us. We have this ace in the hole for welfare. So I would need another genetics specialist really to come alongside and help the team out. Across the entire team, I have enough threes here that they get the job done. It's just they need to be able to collaborate with more than four scientists, which is one of the limiting factors right here. Uh, I do really like the way my team is right now, though, because the price is right. That is the main factor. They're not cutting too deeply into our bottom line, and we need this profit to be able to keep on expanding. So uh, I think I'm going to delay going for strong. We'll pick up fit even though that is far less exciting. Also, I'm thinking about this now. We have this exhibit that only has chasmosaurs and nodosaurs. So the chasmosaurs are kind of the limiting factor here because they only like living with other ankylosaurids. We could expand the herds of these guys, or we could go for a new dino, which is kind of what I want to do here. The ankylosaurid is going to be easy to get to cohabitate with whatever we want. We could go for another small herbivore. We could go for a larger hadrosaurid, which I think is what we are going to do. And... The herbivores, even if they're just ambivalent to other dinosaurs, they'll be able to get along as long as the cohabitation limit doesn't get out of hand. So I think with one other species, they'll be okay. So then the question is finding the right hadrosaurid for the job. We want to find somebody who is going to be able to overlap on wanting to eat ground leaf. So ground fiber, you're out. Oh, that's annoying. All the other hadrosaurids all want ground fiber none of them want to have ground leaf okay well that means we go to one of the small guys like over here we'd go for that these other guys appeal rating is just absolute garbage so i think one of the little guys is going to be the play because the chasmosaurus actively dislikes the stegosaurus so fitting in another armored herbivore is not going to work out very well mm, were you fighting again my guy come on you guys got to be able to get along. I have you guys in the perfect enclosure. There's plenty of space, plenty of food. No reason for you guys to, no reason to behave that way. Hey, hey. If we start looking at the little guys who are available to us, then this one is the highest appeal by far. So we're going to go over here. The siren call of easy cohabitation. Ah, there we go. Heart and lung and muscle strength has been completed. So... Time to see if... I've never really seen anyone of the Hadrosaurs besides the Iguanodon fight each other. Oh, staff are busy. Well, let's modify the genome now, and I'll get to it later. So, we take away... Um, I 
don't have a good enough grasp of the genome to be able to do everything I want to do. All right, back off to China we go to be able to pick up the rest of the genome. I've, I think I'm partaking in the sunk cost fallacy at this point that I should just build a few more and move on like they're happy in the exhibit. But no, we are going to accomplish this. We are going to have a humble, fit alpha master that we drop in to take control of the herd. Okay, I'm sorry, what? Stegosaurus 1 died of old age. How old was he? He was unfit, so that means he was at minus 90% of his life expectancy. So that must have been what it was. It was because he was unfit. Expected lifespan 8. He lived to be 9. Incredible. I just built this exhibit. We made it to the 90th percentile of Centosaurus genome strength, but I'm gonna go ahead and admit defeat here because we have to spend five mod slots just to be able to counteract the negative tendencies they naturally have. That leaves us with far too little to be able to breed in the positive traits that I really want and especially not to have those traits combine onto the potential star alpha. It doesn't, yeah, we're just gonna give up here. Obviously still going to make more, but give up on the dream of trying to breed this perfect alpha. Who is the new guy we wanted to add again? Ah, uh, yes. Here we go. Pachycephalosaurus. Now we got to find where his fossils are found. Ooh, I th we did it right off the bat. That's a first. I'm going to go to the dig site that guarantees only their fossils. Uh, we're going to throw in... Kazem. Kazem's been with us from the very beginning, and the only thing he's good at is going on expeditions, but he is very good at that. I suppose he's also good at research, but we've knocked out pretty much all of the base level research we really want at this point. Hmm, the common cold sweeping through the lagoon. Let's go ahead and get some checkups on the ones that have developed pneumonia. I do not want... Okay, that's just a itchy... I don't want my Tylosaurus going down... Looks like they're healthy, though. We're into the production of our first batch of Pachycephalosaurus, and bad news, they have a natural tendency to being sickly, which is my least favorite trait, and we cannot take sickly off of them unless we actually release multiple sickly dinos. Did Tylosaur hunt down another one? Uh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Guys, I know you're the star attraction, but this is getting expensive. Back to the Pachycephalosaurus. We've got a huge batch here and here, sickly. Sickly, 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 sickly. We got two strong ones. We're gonna release those. I think we do as small a batch as possible. So two sickly dinosaurs. I'll, I should double check before I do this. Two sickly dinos is what it takes to be able to unlock intense immune response, which will be able to modify sickly out of them for all future batches. So that's what we're going to go for. We're going to release the two ones that are crossed. They're both strong and sickly, which how we think the egg is going to exhibit both of these, I don't know, but that's what we got. This little guy has run us on quite the merry chase of expeditions. We had one expedition that went out and was a total dud. So, another expedition down. All to be able to mod sickly off of them. But I do really want to pursue a large herd of them because they have that natural tendency to be strong. We scored two strong dinos out of the last batch. And where are they? Carnivores. Suchomimus is going to be a crowning achievement for our park. I need three more strong dinos to make it happen. Incubation is really just happening at the leisure of one of our scientists. Aw, oh, no. Hmm, I can take the intolerant one, but I don't want the aggressive one. But there we go. Mang with cheaper incubation is the driving force behind all of our incubation. So, uh, really things just progress at her leisure. Now we should finally have the means, the grasp of the genome to take sickly entirely away, and that's all the mods we have, but that's all we need. I'd love to be able to give them an even higher chance to get strong, but we've already been over how expensive that is. Our hatchery has really been busy just replacing dinosaurs, keeping their population stable, but if this guy looks new to you, that's because he is going to be a medium-sized carnivore that is going to be added right over here in this sliver. He's gonna get the odd-sized 
exhibit and uh, just have to make the most of it. We need to pack in more people here to be able to buy our bento sushi, coffee, and action figures. Oh my gosh, we got the full batch. No negative traits, oh no defense. Come on, strong, no not docile, strong, there, strong, 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 we did it. We unlock the Sucho Mimus with the release of this batch. All right, little alpha, you are about to have a number of new friends coming in. Research available, Piscivores 2. We have found him, the Sucho Mimus. Sometimes when they have criteria, they'll just unlock for free. It looks like we still have to pay up to be able to get him, but uh, the price is pretty low for uh, compared to the guys around him, at least. Let's go ahead and style up the exhibit for Cryolophosaurus. Water, prey, open space, just <laughs> the bare bones. This is the meat and potatoes kind of carnivore. I love it. In the air. Oh no, the fence is too close to the stegosaur. Move. Move over, little guy. This has to be one of the ugliest exhibits I have ever made. But it's going to hold an awesome carnivore. Okay, if these stegosaurus ever move. Where's my ranger team? We're going to go see if we can scare them away from the fence. I'm pretty sure that's what the flare does. I really have not used it very much. Let's go see if we can get them off. Alright, it's right over here. Man, this, this exhibit is a nightmare. Oh, that's damaged? How did that get damaged? Okay, we got the flare, so now we go to aim, right? All right, hit him with the flare. Get out of here, guys. Move on. Move along. We're building an exhibit. Come on. Get out. Get him up. Get him up and get him out. What is... They're reacting, but they're not moving. Does the flare actually attract them? Have I thought of this wrong? I think I thought of this wrong. We need a flare over there. There we go, guys. Over there. Well, now they're just stuck on all these. Uh... Yeah, the flare attracts them, guys. I will give it to this ranger that he has pretty good form with the gun. Hey, hey, they, they kind of just moved on on their own, so there we go. We're going to put that down, and now we want to make sure that we can get our gate in here along with the viewing platform. So we'll squeeze the platform over as far as we can and be able to get the path connected. Very nice. Now we go back over to be able to get the gate Grab that, and there's just enough space. You'll love to see it. Now, how far is that sight range? Does it actually get to the back? This is a tiny exhibit. It does not get to the back. Okay, well, is there space for a viewing platform? If we build it all the way back here... Come on, show me blue. You know you want to. Hmm, there's not really... Well, that's fine. Um, we could allow the guests to come around from the back if visibility becomes a real issue. We still, we get the majority of the exhibit. You think that's good enough? Wait, it's telling me there's, is he sick too? How did he get sick? Can I select him? Well, he's at the hospital? Not, not really. Okay, well, it seems like he contracted some kind of disease on the way over, which doesn't bode well for his chances. Okay, release via airlift. Water, prey, open. Oh, no water, but uh, we'll be able to get that in by the time they land. I have to say, my favorite thing... Okay, well, I have a lot of things that I actually do like about this map. The cliffs and the view is really interesting. The contrast of the orange to the greenery that you're putting in the exhibits and the little oasises, the oasises that you're building for the dinosaurs. However you say that, let me know in the comments. I'm actually curious now. 
<laughs> Those are really awesome. But I also love no dinosaur cares about forest. You can't build forest here in the desert. There's a chaos theory mission that is similar to this here in the terrain editor. There is no forest. So this means that the dinosaurs are completely visible. You don't have to put forest out there to conceal them from sight. And ah, oh, it is so much better. I wish every map had the option to turn forest off. In the midst of a sandstorm, our, our brand new carnivore has landed in his exhibit. And he's just collapsed. He's sleeping? Hey man, what's up? These guys look weird with this crest. Like, it's like they're wearing some kind of mask. How would that, how would that possibly help you? Anyway, they are actually happy with the exhibit. They have enough area for at least the uh, the two of them. We might be able to add a few more later on, but uh, I should probably get to managing this storm. Ha <laughs> ha! The Suchomimus is viable. Let's see, if we modify his genomes, I believe he has a few negative traits we're going to want to get rid of. We're also, of course, going to randomize their appearance, take Thirsty off. Social here being antisocial is unfortunate, but it is not going to reduce their life expectancy for this map. So, uh, I think we're just going to have a bunch of antisocial Suchomimus. Yeah, we, uh, we're not even able to research the modification to get rid of it. So, there we are. Now, these guys are the big version of the Baryonyx, and the Baryonyx themselves are not cheap. Not cheap whatsoever, so... I think it's going to kind of break the bank to be able to introduce them. But my hope is with another really high appeal dinosaur within this exhibit, we'll be able to update these amenities to larger sizes. We're at 4.6 star rating. We're really close. Very, very close. I think just a little bit more and we could make it. We need to be making 150,000 more dollars. So an improved set of amenities and higher ticket sales would be able to put us over the edge. It could also be that we're going to need to expand. We could put another monorail stop over here and have two exhibits on either side of that fueling a new set of amenities and that would for sure put us over. I just don't know what dinosaurs I would put in those exhibits right now. Yeah, Suchomimus is one and a half a million dollars a piece. Oh boy. At least they are 640 appeal. That's really high on the level of our other carnivores. At least if you look at the land-based ones, they're going to be far and away the biggest. Baryonyx is all the way down at 326, but he's leading... No, nope, here we go. Cryolophosaurus is at 335, so the jump there is enormous. Okay, so how did you make it out exactly? I would I would have loved to see this story. So you, Centosaurus, let's see here. What is your, uh, what's your safety rating? Do tell. Okay, Centosaurus, safety rating of three. Managed to get out of undamaged, unbroken level five walls. It makes me think that there's a glitch, but because I've seen some of these tiny herbivores be able to escape before, but, and I, I've never caught them in the act is the thing. It seems like maybe with some kind of maybe socializing animation that happens right next to the fence, they just glitch through it. I don't know, maybe they're able to climb over it. I know the raptors can climb the walls. Maybe the, the hydrosaurs can as well. Suchomimus release is ready. Let's see what this guy looks like. We even get the tail of the little Baryonyx here. Waiting for their Piscivore buddy, the big brother. Here he is. He has such a narrow snout, it's like an alligator. This dinosaur has a skull similar to a crocodile's. And mm, or a crocodile's. He is a little lonely, he wants a friend, so we have another one incubating and... We will go for another one as soon as we have our staff freed up to be able to do it. The batches are small and they very often have the aggressive trait, which is no good if they're going to be cohabitating. We also need to, uh, we need to replenish some of our other dinosaur populations. So having the hatchery tied up with these larger dinos that take a long time to work on, slowing us down. 
I just realized now that Comsignathus has died of old age, we never replenished that population. So we've just had Gigantus Spinosaurus over here alone. And there's another Dino and Ankylosaur they would enjoy living with that overlaps perfectly with eating ground leaf as their only food source for over here, ground leaf. They're actually, I mean, Gigantospinosaurus was in a tiny exhibit over here, so they've been a little cramped this entire time, but making it okay. So I think it's time we give them a little buddy. The expedition for Polcanthus uh, fossils is processing right now, so hopefully by the time we get a decent Suchomimus population ready, we'll be able to roll into that next dino production. We've been showing the starter zone here a lot of love, adding the Suchomimus in this exhibit over here. We added one of the little guys into here, and then Polcanthus is about to be added out over here, so we really need to optimize the amenities right down in this zone. Maybe that'll be enough to pick up our last 0.2, 0.2 tenths of a star. Ah, I got one needy Polacanthus from that batch. Well, thank you, I suppose. For optimizing here, this vegan buffet is just a small amenity, so that's got to go. We can then slide the emergency shelter all the way over, I believe, to corner it so that we know how much space we'll utilize this space for large amenities. And then we will swing across to this zone to try and squeeze in some other large amenities. We might have to do some more rearranging. We'll see how things play out. Polcanthus is ready, so he will airlift in. Looking at guest overcrowding, just making sure things are good and we're not losing. We have got red over here, so we're gonna fix that. Checking all the other areas first here. Looks like this is the one zone. This is the hotness. The new hotness everybody wants to see, Sucho Mimas in the flesh. So we're going to go up to main thoroughfare, set this to replace, pop these in, and go ahead and extend the main thoroughfare all the way through to the main park entrance. Very nice, very nice. We can now hop back over to management view to be able to get an idea. Okay, so <laughs> should have definitely foreseen that I needed to extend the main thoroughfare to be able to connect to the monorail given that is how everybody gets to the rest of the park. Emergency shelter here. Emergency shelter is at 99%. For some reason, it's not connecting down there. I don't understand why it would not be, but 99% uh, is fine. It, oh, there it is, back to 100. Okay, this restroom coverage. Restroom coverage is looking is good. Let's get another Polcanthus going. So we will assign our scientists and lament the fact that we cannot upgrade the hatchery to be able to have either more bays or the uh, the higher survival rate on the eggs. Then this formal wear, yeah, you've got to go. You're only a medium. We're gonna play with a large amenities right now, guys. So we're gonna go up to large, and then does it squeeze in? Looks like we have to wait for the demolition to complete, and then we're gonna go for our row of three large amenities and rearrange here on the other side as needed. Okay, amenity row is ready to be built. Let's go for the large gift shop first. Themed for the Baryonyx and the Suchomimus, and look at that, it nestles right between the shelter and the, uh, the power line. Very satisfying to see when things just fit on those tight margins. So then we're gonna go for food here. And then we are going to move Boba. Yeah, move Boba over to this side. Hmm, one of these is actually in a power dead zone? Okay, that's kind of interesting. I was not expecting that. I thought this whole area was gonna be just dotted with power lines. But uh, we'll provide its own substation that doesn't really cost us anything, anything significant at least, so <laughs> the power lines are so ugly. Now to configure these, let's see here. We want to go for Where's my old favorite? All the way at the bottom, skeleton display. And then we pop in the aquarium, very nice. We're just gonna do that on basically all of these because as long as the shop is selling something that is going to be uh, favorably received by the few adventure guests who have decided to show up, then this one's modified a little differently, but it's still making a tidy profit. Yes, all of these profits are exceptionally good. Ooh, look at that, 4.9 stars. What is the breaking point? Oh, we are so close. We're only 7,000 away. 
So what what is what's next to release? Oh, we got this. We got this. Here we go. Sucho Mimus. Release the Sucho Mimus. Polcanthus. Is this it? Five stars! We got it. Completion time, 8.56. And we got all of the cosmetics. That was all it took, was optimizing the starter zone there with a few better amenity placements and just a few more dino attractions. Absolutely incredible. This map really was one of the most interesting, but well, now they're not going to show it. Not because of the explicit challenge criteria, but because of the map design not giving you any large open areas. We were able to work around that, I think, pretty well. I'm very satisfied with how the park runs, having the monorail snaking through the canyons and then dropping people off. To be able to see the dinosaur exhibits nestled up against the cliffs, I think that's awesome. But the real challenge was coming from how they modified the research tree for this mission, making your gene mods. Well, part of it was the, the challenge criteria, how if you had a negative trait on one of your dinos, you would lose 90% of their lifespan. So you really wanted to be able to use the genetic modifications, but they had different criteria and they required you to release the weaker dinos. So you had this web of decision making on if it was worth it to release the dinos with the negative traits that would have a very tiny lifespan so you're kind of wasting money developing those but then you're able to get the mods to be able to improve that species for the rest of the park's existence and i think that we balanced finding the mods fairly well we ended up getting a lot of them as you saw from that that research stop uh so yeah this this one was really cool one thing I always like to do at the very end is take stock of the overall park. If we look at our appeal rating, the Tylosaur is the star attraction. No surprise there. He is such a great dinosaur. Let's see. Did we actually reach our appeal target? It says we did. I'm impressed that we, we made it. I was not following, but I felt like we were a long way off. And with the high species target, I didn't really think... We were going to get up there, or that at least. It was a very slow climb, but hey, we did it in the end. And we did it in part-time. But if we look, these guys are going to set the golden standard of appeal rating. So we have 4,000 appeal out of that lagoon viewing stand. Absolutely incredible stuff from them. Out of here on the starter exhibits, we have 4,300 over here. Looking at Suchomimus and Baryonyx combined, they were a star attraction in themselves, obviously not as the individual dinosaurs, the Tylosaurs have higher appeal ratings, but taken as a whole, this exhibit is pulling just as hard as the Lagoon. And then this little starter zone has our Chasmosaurus. All of the original wild dinosaurs we caught have died out. They got too old, but we were able to replace them. And so we're looking at 1,200 appeal over there. The Gigantospinosaurus over here, 2,100 appeal. They also have the new Polcanthus added in there. Our first carnivores that we developed are right next to them with 1,800 appeal. This exhibit is kind of long. It has the two viewing stations. So we're looking at 1,200 over there and 500 over here. So just a lot of dinos. And this was kind of an interesting design for the exhibit. We had to make the most of the wonky space that we were presented with. These carnivores, oh, what is this urgent message? Shelter's not up to date. Oh, so I can lose the scientists. Yeah, I'll just cover the costs. I'm fine. The, the scenario is over, guys. These carnivores never really developed into a big thing. I probably could have put a few more over here. 1,200 appeal for them. And with the storm warning, we're going to wrap things up. We've got 2,400 appeal for the Stegosaurus and the uh, Centosaurus combo over here. That was really nice that we got the Stegosaurus to unlock for free. Thank you guys so much for the support you have shown for this series, playing every single challenge map on Jurassic Difficulty. It has been a blast going through all of these. If you are just tuning in now for this episode, then go back and see what I did on the previous maps. I have learned so much over the course of this series, and I really love this game. While this is going to have to be the end of our challenge map series, it is by no means the end of Jurassic World content here on the channel. Some of the chaos missions are calling my name and I think they would be fun to go ahead and put into videos. And after that, we'll have to see where the park building itch takes us. Till next time, thank you guys for watching and have a good one.